guess who? It's me, Pat the Sound Guy, back again. With a broken piece of gear. We have a six speaker here. He's got no high end. We have a bad horn diaphragm in there. We're going to tear into this, show you how to fix it. And save you a bunch of money, save you a bunch of time. Let's get at it. Now, a little bit of quick diagnosis you can do on the gig. A lot of times, what tends to take out your high frequencies in these kind of speakers, especially if they're being used as monitors, like this is being used as a monitor. It's going to be used as a front of house cabinet. You can see the hole, and the hole on the bottom. This particular monitor was hanging from the ceiling with chain. And what you tend to have with monitors is that you'll overdo it on a control. You'll be sending something to the monitor and you'll crank it way too loud, way too quickly, right with a microphone next to it, and it'll go whoop, 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 and feedback in the high end quite heavily, and bang, there goes your high end, and your speaker doesn't work properly anymore, and it sounds like... <laughs> okay, so, this particular speaker, you take the handle off, undo some screws, and inside you've got your crossover, and that splits the highs and the lows. And there's your lows with your woofer, and there's your highs with your horn. And there's the horn lens, and there's the horn motor, and inside there's a horn diaphragm with a little coil. And that's what we're probably be replacing today. Now, if it's been moved around a lot, and it worked last time you used it, and it doesn't work at this gig, check the wires on the horn. Or if the woofer's not working, check the wires on that. Make sure there's no loose wires. Now, you can see that... This plug for the woofer and the horn are is disconnected. Now, this is disconnected for a reason, because I was using the meter to check if it has continuity on the two wires for the horn, so I've unplugged it from the circuit board. So you can check if anything wires are unplugged from the crossover on the circuit board. So this if this was unplugged, you plug it back in, you've got highs, that's great. For this particular one, I have checked for continuity, which we'll show you in a minute with the meter. A lot of the time, your problem with your horns, these kind of speaker cabinets, in this particular Yorkville E10, he has a light bulb. This is a standard light bulb that you would put in your car, tail light, or signal light bulb. So this is available at any hardware store, any auto parts store, cheap buck or two each. So you look at the filament first off, and the filament looks fine, but we'll put the meter on this and we'll check the continuity. So we got Mr. Meter here. And it's set on the resistance setting. We've got the light bulb here. Just a little bit of acrobatics to check it. And we have continuity on the light bulb. So that means that it's past the signal. So this actually fits. It. This acts as a fuse, and it's good. So, next thing to check is for continuity a circuit on your horn itself. So we'll check this guy on the wiring harness, and that tells us we've got no continuity at all. Nothing. So, we know... Based on that diagnosis, very quick, what our issue is likely to be. Now we just have to take the grill off, take that horn lens out of there, and we can have a look at the diaphragm in there and its state of repair, which is not. It's toast. So, I'll take the grill off, and we'll come back. All right, so we've pulled the grill off, pulled the screws out of the horn lens, and they come out pretty quick. I didn't even bother to grab my drill because I didn't you know the impact gun. I didn't even need it because the screws are quite coarse thread and they come out very quickly. So there's the horn lens that comes out, and there's our horn motor with a diaphragm inside. So we're going to pull these screws out here, pull that diaphragm right out the back, and we'll take the diaphragm 
out that's in there of the motor and have a look at it and we'll put it on the bench. I'm also going to mark where these wires come from. So we have a yellow. And that's going to be a black. To show you, you can do this in the field. You don't need a workbench. You can do it if you're careful. And it's not rocket science. So here we go. My works back in my rental days. In a rental department at the large music chain here in Nova Scotia. This used to be a weekly occurrence for placing horn diaphragm kits in speakers because they, the DJ people and regular people would rent them and they would overdo them and run the amplifiers into clip, overdrive everything, and take out horn diaphragms. And also take out woofers. You know, that didn't happen quite as often, but you know. Something else I like to do when taking something like this apart is to match up with a line and cap to the body of the horn motor. Carefully pick that up out of there and bang, there's your diaphragm. Pull our screws out. The thing is, everything's magnetized. And here you can see that little coil of wire on that diaphragm is just shot. He's discolored and he's toast. So let's pull this diaphragm off the back of here, off this cap. I'm also going to describe this too. Sharpies and paint pens are great handy things. So when I put this diaphragm back together, we're going to make sure that the new diaphragm in there, that we're going to know which way it went. So we now know there's a little number one on that. You can see little number one there. So there's definitely a mark. And hopefully the new one has that so we can get the polarity correct when we put this back together. So we want the horn diaphragm to move out in and out with the woofer. So we want them moving together. So if you get the polarity wrong, you'll have the horn going in when the woofer's going out, and that's not the greatest thing. So we've definitely figured out this is our problem. That's just burnt. So we'll go grab the new diaphragm, and we'll have a look. There's a new diaphragm. They've made a slight change to it as well. This is the replacement part. It's the same body and everything, except it doesn't have an aluminum diaphragm. They just use the plastic. And I have a feeling this will sound better. I have a feeling it'll sound a lot better. So maybe someday someone will blow up the other monitor down there and I'll have to put a new one of these in and it'll improve the sound. Bango. Now let's see. Yep, it's the same style of marking on here. So we're going to take that as being the polarity marking and put that back in there. Now, here's the next thing. <laughs> the one on the left is the old one. The one on the right is the new one. So you can see how discolored this is. This was running very hard, getting quite abused for long periods with very high programming to it. 
with low transients. So that's what heats that coil up, and that's what makes it fail. So we're gonna go find a roll of masking tape and show you how to clean that gap. All right, so here's the magnet, and here's the gap on the back there. And I've got one of my business cards with a piece of electrical tape folded over right on my fingers. Masking tape works best for this, but electrical tape is what we've got because you can use just about anything that's sticky like that for tape. Duct tape doesn't work quite as well because it's way too sticky. The trick with this is you take your business card and you take your piece of tape on it and you put it in the gap. Let's see if we can pick that up. And you run this through. And what this does is all the junk in the gap will now stick to the tape. You want to do that. You see a bunch of junk on there coming off. And any junk and debris left over from that failed coil in there on that diaphragm will stick to the tape and not stay in the gap. And if you don't do this, you can have all that debris in there. I like to take also just a plain business card and run that in there when I'm done and do a final kind of wipe down and clean to make sure there's no debris stuck in the hole in that wonderful little gap. That's an important step. And there's little tabs on the back of this magnet that the diaphragm lines up to. So be very careful when you drop that on there. There you go. Many, many, many speakers work like this. It's not difficult. You can do it in the bar or at home, in the field. You know, it, it's not that hard a deal. So where's our mark we made? Our line. That lines up with that. Very carefully drop that on there. And that lines up. Now, you tighten these screws down, be very gentle. Don't tighten one down all the way first. Just snug it up, finger tight. Crisscross pattern, so go across the next one, finger tight. Over here, finger tight. Maybe screw it in, so finger tight. Finger tight on this one. And then just a quarter half a turn quarter half a turn just so snug them up don't be too tight because you'll crack the plastic and this cover went back on here as you can see this is a great quality well-built piece of equipment yorkville man canadian made this was made here in canada can't argue with how they build their stuff man it's it sounds good it's very robust like this whole cabinet is the same plywood as you see on this mount it makes a difference when you build quality cabinets they even do all their circuit boards here in Canada too over in Yorkville So, black wire on the black post. And something that's smart they did here is they actually have two different size terminals, so you can't really screw it up if you didn't label it. But a lot of speakers I've seen over the years, both terminals are exactly the same size, so you can mess it up. Four machine screws hold this in into T nuts. So when you're putting screws like this in, don't put too much downward pressure on these kind of machine screws because the T-nuts will pop out the back and you'll have a hard time getting them back in their holes and holding them back in. 
that works for speaker woofers as well. There's usually T-nuts in behind there. And if you push on it as you pull them screws out with the impact of the drill and the screwdriver, then you'll pop the T-nuts out the back and you're sitting there trying to squish them back in, glue them back in or whatever, trying to get them to stay so they don't spin. Yeah, business card, a piece of electrical tape, and a screwdriver, and the Allen key to get the grill off. And that's all the tools are needed. And a new diaphragm, of course. So. so it goes up. It just goes on like that. Lines it up. Yeah, we put our Robertson head screw on here because these are double type screws. These work both as a Canadian Robertson head bit. So there's the Robertson head. It's a Canadian invention. The Canadians use this a lot. So you can see that's a Phillips head screw, but it also takes the Robertson as well. So it's much more robust and easier to deal with. Well, there you have it. I got the whole thing back together. And I'm just putting in some screws for that grill. I hooked it back up to the amplifier, and right away you can hear that horn hissing. That's a good sign. You've got lots of top end. And it's rocking good to go. I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope it saves you some time and money. So if you like it, please give a thumbs up. If you really like it, subscribe for more. And we'll see you on the next video. Keep it real, people. Keep the dream alive.